The population of a city has grown approximately 3.5% each year in the past decade. Assuming this pattern of growth continues, what will the population be 10 years from now if there were 45,000 people when the data was first collected? So we want to begin by writing down the first few terms in this sequence. So it says 10 years ago, when the data was collected, there were 45,000 people. Now it's telling us that it grew about 3.5% each year. So if I were to take 45,000 and multiply that by 0 0.035, which is 3.5% as a decimal, that would give me a value of 1,575. So is this the next term in the sequence, 1,575? Well, clearly not, because if, if my population went from 45,000 down to 1,575, my population wouldn't be growing. That would be a drastic decrease. So that's a common mistake. Commonly, people think that we should multiply by 0 0.035. But we know, in reality, that's just going to give us the increase in the population. And then we have to add that value to 45,000 to get the actual number of people we'd have the next year. So we should have a total the next year of 46,575 people. So now we want to figure out what did I multiply by to go from one term to the next here? Because I clearly did not multiply by just... 0 0.035. And if you look at the work that we have down below, you can see if I were to factor out 45,000 from both of these terms, I'd be left with 0 0.035 plus 1. In other words, I'm really multiplying that 45,000 by 1.035. So that's what I'm multiplying by. And that is going to be what we call our common ratio. If you're multiplying repetitively by that constant value, then we have a geometric sequence. So I know my sequence here is geometric, and I know my common ratio, that multiplier, r, is equal to 1.035. So just don't forget that when you're dealing with these percentages, if we have 3.5% growth, essentially we need to add that growth to 100%. So we're looking at 103.5% total, which as a decimal is 1.035. Now before we go further, I like to keep track of the terms of my sequence and their actual meaning in the context of the situation. And this one we really have to read carefully because it says that the population was 45,000 when the data was first collected. And that was 10 years ago. So this 45,000 is going to be 10 years ago what our population is, or was. And 46,575, then that would be my population basically nine years ago, and so on. So while we're gonna call this my first term, n equals one and n equals two, we do need to be cognizant of the fact that this is not the current population, but this was the population 10 years ago. So we know the general form for any geometric sequence can be found by multiplying the first term by r raised to the n minus 1 power. So for this sequence of numbers, my first term is 45,000. My r value, my common ratio, what I'm multiplying by is 1.035 raised to the n minus 1 power. So this would be our, our equation for this sequence of numbers. But now we need to think about if we want the population right now, then we've got to figure out, well, excuse me, we don't want the population now, we want it 10 years from now. It says, what will the population be 10 years from now? How does that relate to our initial value of 45,000, which was 10 years ago? So you've got to think, well, 10 years from now, then my n value here, if it was n equals 1 10 years ago, then 10 years from now, I need my n value to be 20. Therefore, I'm looking for the 20th term. So a sub 20 is equal to 45,000 times 1.035 raised to the 20 minus 1 power. And yes, of course, you can use your calculator. And we're going to get 85,000, excuse me, 86,000. 86,000 
512.56. And I know you cannot have 0.56 of a person, but I like to go ahead and list this decimal here so you can really check your calculations in your calculator to make sure that they are accurate.